Welcome back again, everyone. It's Dina Calmetta here. And for today's news, I would like to bring you some updates in regards to North Korea, Iran, Russia, and the U.S. But let's start with North Korea. It is being reported that apparently President Trump's comments in regard to the North Korean leader Kim Jong-un would represent a very dangerous challenge if they intended to provoke North Korea. Apparently, the comment that has angered the North Korean leader is Trump's reference to him as Rocket Man. According to the KCNA news agency, Trump's comments threatened to return the two countries to the tensions it were two years ago. In 2017, the two leaders famously engaged in a war of words with Trump calling Kim Rocket Man and North Korea slamming the U.S. president as a dotard. Since then, Trump and Kim have met three times. But negotiations over North Korea's nuclear weapons and ballistic missile arsenal have stalled amid disagreements and rising tensions. This year, we saw a number of short-range ballistic missiles launched by North Korea. And Kim has warned that the United States has until the end of the year to change its stance or he could take an unspecified new path. And on Tuesday, President Trump once again called Kim Rocket Man and said that the United States reserved the right to use military force against North Korea. North Korea argued that if this is meant to make expressions reminiscent of those days just two years ago when a war of words was fought across the ocean, surface again on purpose, it will be a very dangerous challenge. The lack of courtesy shown to Kim had prompted the waves of hatred of our people against the U.S. and the Americans, and they are getting higher and higher. It would be fortunate if Trump's remarks were simply an instantaneous verbal lapse. But the matter becomes different if they were a planned provocation that deliberately targeted us. The vice minister of foreign affairs for North Korea continued that if any language and expressions stoking the atmosphere of confrontation are used once again on purpose at a crucial moment as now, that must really be diagnosed as the relapse of the dotage of the dotard. It goes on further to report that President Trump has stated that Washington could use military force if necessary, stating that if we have to, we'll do it. And on Wednesday, North Korea's army chief said it was disappointed by Trump's suggestion of using military force against North Korea and warned that any strike would be met with prompt corresponding actions. North Korean state media warned that a simmering conflict between the two nations, the United States and North Korea, could turn into a full-blown war at any moment. Even an accident could lead to an all-out armed conflict. So some very harsh words coming from North Korea. And I would even go so far to say a warning from them. But at the same time, President Trump also stated that if he had to use military force, then he will. So definitely a very serious situation. But speaking of serious, let's talk about Iran. Apparently, Iran's foreign minister sent a letter to the United Nations on Thursday that it was determined to go ahead with its disputed ballistic missile program, stating that Iran is determined to resolutely continue its activities related to ballistic missiles and space launch vehicles. The British, German, and French ambassadors called on the UN Secretary General in a letter on Wednesday to inform the Security Council in his next report that Iran's missile program was inconsistent with a UN resolution that had endorsed the nuclear deal reached between Iran and the six world powers. In the meantime, Iran is taking advantage of unrest in neighboring Iraq to stockpile short-range ballistic missiles there. It is being reported that this missile buildup was part of an Iranian effort to project power in the Middle East, as the United States increases its military forces in the region following a series of attacks blamed on Iran. The intelligence officials said that the missiles threaten U.S. allies such as Israel and Saudi Arabia, as well as American troops stationed in the area. Officials would not comment on the type of missiles that Iran is secretly hiding in Iraq. But the report noted a short-range missile with a range of 600 miles could strike Jerusalem from Baghdad 
And just yesterday, U.S. officials confirmed to Fox News that a U.S. Navy warship has intercepted a significant cache of what is thought to be missile parts from Iran headed to rebels in Yemen. This is the first time such high-level missile components had been seized en route to the four-year civil war in Yemen, where Iranians support Houthi rebels. The U.S. has repeatedly accused Iran of smuggling arms to the rebels, who are battling the Yemeni government. A small Navy boat and Coast Guard boarding team seized the weapons last Wednesday in the Northern Arabian Sea. The weapons have been linked to Iran. The seizure came just as Secretary of State Mike Pompeo met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to discuss counterbalancing Iran. According to officials, the Navy strike group operating in the region was conducting routine maritime operations when sailors noticed a small wooden boat was not displaying a flag from any country. Navy and Coast Guard personnel stopped the boat and boarded it for inspection when they found the weapons. They did not determine an exact number, but asserted it was a significant cache. They said that the small boat was towed to port and the boat's crew was transferred to the Yemeni Coast Guard. The weapons are being stored on the American warship. And in the meantime, the Trump administration is weighing whether to significantly expand the U.S. military presence in the Middle East to counter Iran. The move could double the number of troops in the region, deploying up to 14,000 more, with dozens of ships that could also be moved into the area in addition to the military hardware. President Trump could make a decision on the increase before the end of the year. But even if Trump doesn't approve the large-scale deployment, he might give the green light to a smaller one. Among military officials in the administration, there is concern about an Iranian attack on U.S. interests. The thought is that maintaining a larger military presence could act as a deterrent from further provocation from Iran. The United States has sent about 14,000 troops to the region since May, after officials indicated a high-ended threat from Iran, who opposes both America and Israel. So tensions continue to rise between the United States and Iran, especially in regards to these recent events. And I'm sure will rise further if we do, in fact, send 14,000 more troops. But as always, I'll continue to follow these reports and bring you updates. However, I would like to bring you a quick update in regards to Russia. It is being reported that Moscow was ready to extend the last major nuclear arms control treaty without conditions or discussions, according to the Russian leader. He said Russia is ready to immediately, as soon as possible, before the end of the year, extend the New START treaty without any preconditions, so that there would be no double, triple interpretation of our position later. I'm saying this officially. The New START treaty, which obliges Moscow and Washington to reduce the number of its strategic nuclear missile launches by half, was signed in April of 2010. But the agreement expires in February of 2021, and there is no option at this point for it to be extended until 2026. Russia has already filed all the paperwork needed to begin talks on extending the treaty, but the U.S. has not reacted to the proposal. Moscow is concerned that the Trump administration is willing to ditch the New START deal due to the fact that there's no longer an INF treaty. The INF treaty banned Russia and the U.S. from fielding ground-based missiles with a range of between 310 miles and 3,418 miles in Europe and was the cornerstone of security on the continent since 1987. The United States' withdrawal from the deal left Russia with no choice but to abandon it as well, raising fears of the new arms race between the two countries. So it seems that Russia is very concerned about this New START treaty, even going to the extent, according to President Putin, with no preconditions. So at this point, we can only wait to see what President Trump will do next. In recent broadcasts, I have reported that President Trump wasn't only looking to make a deal with Russia, but also China. However, China has stated in the past that they had no interest in reaching a nuclear deal with the United States. And if no deal is reached between any of these nations, China being a very powerful nuclear force, and Russia, same thing, and of course the United States, it's kind of a free-for-all and will indeed start a new arms race. And I think we're even seeing that right now. And I will definitely continue to keep you updated. I just wanted to bring you all a quick report today and get you these headlines. Please do leave your comments in the comment section. And also, if you have a free moment, come and visit us on Facebook, where I have these stories and many more. 
as well as our website at www.cww7news.org. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful evening and God bless. Thank you.